I'm very happy to sit down with them today because I've known them for a very long time pero never pa talaga kami nagkaroon ng ganitong klaseng conversation about relationship, marriage, and love. So we have with us the power couple, Dr. Vicky Bello and Hayden Ko. Mr. and Mrs. Ko. Good. Wow, Bello <laughs> Ko. Oh, ma. I keep convincing Pero I really wanted to discuss this with you guys. Let's start off with yung relationship. Malaking challenge ba si relationship yung age difference? I think for most people, it will be challenging. For us, because of her personality, hindi siya as challenging. I would say, in a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, I would say for, for Vic, siguro mga, mga 8 for me. Because the personality of Vicky, you see, hmm. na she's very childlike, young um, at heart. Very young at heart. Paminsan nga, si kasama namin si Scarlett nagugulat ako na parang pinipong parang <laughs> mas mature. <laughs> mas mature Scarlett sa yung yeah. So so in that sense, hindi siya ganong kahirap. I think in many ways, Hayden is more mature than me. So I think his frustration is always. Why are you such a child? Of course, I like the word childlike. I never get frustrated. Childlike. childish mo, which I admit I am. He has a problem with it, pero ako wala. So, I don't. So, nahirapan lang ako dito. Kasi, of course, kasi nagsaumpisa kami friends talaga. So, ang sarap ng friendship. Mga six months kami na... Anong year yun? Nag-start kayo na uh, as friends? 2005. 2005. Oh, 2005. Yes. On my 25th birthday kasi kami nagkakilala sa US. Oh, regalo ako ni God. So, 2005, you first met. Ano yung first impression nyo sa isa't isa? <laughs> Okay. But Honestly, hindi niya ako pinansin, hindi niya ako tiningnan. Wala. Pero kilala mo na si Dr. Abel. Alam ko yung name, kasi when oh. you're in med school, kasi hindi ka nanonood ng TV eh. Pero narinig mo yung mga kwentuhan, di ba? So I know the name Dr. Bello and you know, parang someone you can, you can admire, you respect for what she's built, di ba? Pero hindi ko alam anong itsura. Oh. So I was late. Pagdating ko, yun, nag-skip lang ako. So yung unang... Nakita niya sa akin. Ipakita mo ma kung paano mo ko dinaanan. Kasi tumawid lang ako masikip parang sinihan, di ba? Nag-skip lang ako pag gano'n. Tapos ba't ko yung wala niya nakita? Nice spot. <laughs> so tininan ko yung face pwede na red. Oh. Amin mo, ang una mong iniisip is paano ko siya ma-improve? Hindi naman. No, kasi na, na-intrigue lang ako sa kanya kasi ang dami nagpapalagpakan and wow! Kusina sikat to, siya. never ko heard. Yeah, ah, never heard so him. sikat ka na. Sabi ko, sino to? Sikat yan sa USD. Ma-PR lang ako. Oh, yeah. na, I said, ano ko yung specialty? Kasi bakit may palagpakan? I was intrigued. Then, ang mga, mga third hour, I said, I stood up. Sabi ng friend ko, saan ka pupunta? Sabi ko, I will entertain myself. Umupo ako sa tabi niya. Tina mo, aggressive. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> anyway, so sabi ko sa kanya, um, why are they all clapping when you arrive? Who are you? Ah, sabi mo? <laughs> He goes, no, no, it's my birthday kasi, and you know, I'm, I'm Mr. Congeniality. Anyway, so tinanong ko, yes. sabi, very proud din naman na oh. sabi niya, I'm an intern. Nick! <laughs> Ibig sa, inisip ko, intern, birthday niya, 24 to 35 <laughs> years old, oh my gosh. It was, he was the president of the Interns Association in Makati Med, where I also interned. So, parang pareho kami at USD. Pero so, sabi ko, ay, 24, 25, okay, baka pwede kis Crystal. So, when I, actually, when I arrived home that night, the first thing I told Crystal, I found your husband! He goes, what? <laughs> I said, darling, I found out your husband. He's a doctor, he's tall, he's handsome, he's funny, and he's smart. Yun. Ah, so yun yung original yun na plan original noong 2005. Na plan. Paano nagsimula yung friendship? Kasi we exchanged numbers in the event. So, mga third month, I visited her. I asked if I could visit and uh, and witness mga surgeries. And so that happened, and then we became friends. Yeah, and sweet niya kasi when he comes to the clinic, nagdadala ng chocolate. Ang cute yun niya. Naliligaw ka na nun? Ba't ka nagdadala ng chocolate? Eh, Nakakahiya kaya pumunta ng walang dala. Sabi ng mga mga. Eh, di parang naliligaw. Pag bibisita ka, dapat like kang may dala. So parang naliligaw ka na nun? Pag pumunta ba ako sa bahay niya, may dalang pagpasta? It was defense, defense. <laughs> Hindi naman. Ay, pero, pero pag may dala kang offering, may dala, parang may, dala ka lang, may intention na rin yun kahit pa paano. Nakakaya lang naman eh. Nung may dala na akong bulaklak, ito ko sabi rin. Okay lang siya nagdala ng bulaklak. After the food seas. <laughs> ano ba yung food seas? Okay, kasi nasa restaurant kami, we eat lunch out. Occasionally. Tapos so, ganun, bilala lang. Ewan ko, to, kasi usually she's, she's in front of me. Maliyan. Pero this time, to, Mahaba kasi siya yung legs ko, diba? Sa kanan ko. Tapos so, okay. gumagano. Tapos gumagano lang, gumagano-gano na siya. Sabi ko, 
pagdating ko sa bahay, tawag ako sa best friend. Alam mo, napapusis siya sa akin. Ano ibig sabihin? <laughs> Nakakatawa. <laughs> Nakakatawa kayo. Nakakatawa. Kumakain kami. Hindi namin nakita yung legs namin. Pero parang yun ang nangyayari sa baba. Parang as if hindi namin alam. Kumakain lang kami. <laughs> So, it's so, so very formal. That means he likes you. Huh? No, formal yung ano sa ta- taas ng table pero under the table. May mga flirting na nalagay. Sila, may sarili sila. May sariling eh. mundo yung mga yeah. legs. Chumachacha na sila sa baba. <laughs> so nung time na yun, nagkaroon na, na eventually it led to attraction yes, to each other. Is... So when you guys became a couple, naging uh, controversial because when I attended the dinner here, yes. si Mario Dumawal wrote about it kaya. Mm-hmm. It was a secret. We were dating. We were having lots of fun. Okay lang. Masaya oh. lang kami. Tapos, one day, Mario saw it and wrote the story on TV. And then Patrol. it became public. And then it became public and suddenly all eyes were on me. Yeah. Who is this guy? Mm-hmm. And then, nagkaroon ng problema because, of course, my friends, like, oh, young. But I'm a little of a rebel. So why? Why can't it be if you were dating a younger guy and you're a girl? It's such a big Taboo. But if a guy is dating a 30-year younger girl, parang okay lang, di ba? So of course, I go, I have to make things equal. So ito na, ang laki na respect ko kay Hayden kasi number one, he's a doctor. Number two, his grades are really good. He's president of the internet. He's Mr. U.S. T. Pitor Moreno. For me at 25, wow. Because I wasn't anywhere at 25. I was married. Pero wala akong mga achievements at 25 pa, di ba? So in my mind, nobody will look at Hayden ng boy toy. Kasi hindi naman siya typical boy to eh. Mm. May, may doktor naman to. Pero mm. ang nangyari, my friends all judged him that way. So, na-shock din siya kasi in his mind, in, he's used to being respected in USD. Parang naano siya, parang, na-pindam. Parang, in my world, the world that I know, parang okay na okay ako. Parang yung self-esteem kong mataas na mataas because I'm achieving this much in, in this short a span of time. Parang yung future na vision ko sarili ko, parang better than 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 others more opportunities ganyan tapos biglang nung nung lumabas yung news na yun para nag-iba when all of a sudden wala akong na-achieve at all mm-hmm. so parang that became an identity crisis doon ako nag i think doon na nag-start yung yung crisis of identity na really na naging importante na sa akin teka ano na ba talagang sin, ano na ba talagang gagawin ko or ginagawa ko Sino na ba talaga ako? Yun lang yung naging trigger. So, how did that affect the relationship? Nung naging public na siya, tapos nagkaroon na ng judgment from the well, people? Well, I, I got a very stupid, bright idea. Kasi ang GMA, tumawag sa kanya, they wanted him to be in this contest. Uh, ano yun? Celebrity duets. Celebrity duets. Ah, idea, idea mo ba yun? Idea mo yun. Jimmy, Jimmy's, Jimmy's idea. idea. Call him. Pero ikaw ang nag- nag-no push. siya. Uh-huh. Nag-no siya. Bilaan mo kung paano yung, paano yung entrada Sisi. niya sa akin. Paano? Oh, then sabi ko, do you love me? <laughs> Ganyan yung intro. <laughs> of course, ganun kayo, girl. Diba? 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 Nasa off. Nasa pinag pa ako nun eh. Naalala ko. He goes, yes, of course. Di ba, you said you'll do anything for me? Yes. Oh, why don't you join? Kasi... You'll make me harana, di ba? You'll make me harana on TV. And I said, para lang maging ano ka rin. Alam mo, mga people, once you enter showbiz, narespetuhin ka rin doon mo ngayon. Oh. So, so that was the, actually the beginning of so many, many challenges na nangyari. That. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I guess it's one of the biggest things I regret. I never imagined we'd go through what we did. Oh. And so publicly, di ba? Kasi parang tahimik naman ang buhay ko. Yes, you have, you kind of know. But hindi naman, they don't know about my private life. But at that point in time, um, parang everybody knew. And oh. you know, the one thing about me, Tony, I think um, they God really tries you. Right? Because for example, what's important to me is to always look intelligent. I don't mm-hmm. like to look stupid. Then I want to be, you know, parang respected. My gosh, I think at that time I looked so bad. Like, why is she protecting this man who did all these things to her? Pero, di ba? So parang I look so dumb. Like, I I know the perception is you're, this old lady still loves this guy in spite of everything. Parang what's she doing? You never broke up though. We did. 
we did, but you know what people don't understand because I learned everything in December 2008. You know, but we went through it together. So December, I found out we broke up. January, February. March, you broke up the relationship. Yeah, so we were apart for four months. In 2007. No, when? At 2008. 2008. 2009, we went out. 2008. May. We already broke up because of the issues. And then 2008, then I got the letter. It was more of an extortion attempt. Okay, you give me this much, otherwise we'll release this. Uh, the videos. Videos, ganyan, ganyan. Bisa binigyan ko siya ng, ano, ng, ng kailangan niyang gawin para i-prove sa akin na yan lang yung copy mo. Ganyan, ganyan. Yeah, anyway, hindi, hindi siya na willing to negotiate. You know? So, the guy released it on my birthday. May 20. Mm-hmm. So, it was all over the news, May 20. And then every, every week, naglalabas sila ng hindi ko alam kung sino. Naglalabas sila ng videos again. again. So, nung lumabas yung video, ano yung naramdaman mo nung time mo yun? Walang word to describe it. I mean, it's, it's a mixture of... Uh, definitely, there's a lot of uh, humiliation. There's a lot of fear. Um, and there's a feeling of uh, desperation. Uh, What am I going to do to fix this? What am I going to do to fix this? The roller coaster, you know, emotions, but man, no positive, not negative. When your mm. dark life is exposed mm. to the light, pejo. Oh, di mo alam kung paano. Oh, paano mo survive yung time na yun? Kung ako lang on my own, on my own, I really won't be able to survive. So I think my family, um, Vicky. Interestingly, na she yung na offend ko, she pa yung yung to help ko dun. And most importantly, I think, and people might find this corny, but it's really God. Looking back, now I realize that it's very true that uh, sometimes God allows you to go through shameful things because that's actually grace and mercy na yun na lang ang papa-experience sa sa'yo just to wake you up. To me, yun nangyari sa akin, although it was more shameful, um, it was already the mercy of God na in order to wake me up in a moment that I felt alive again because I was really dead in my in my parang my spirit was already dead I was uh, I remember um, ano yung I, I, think, I think it was the Senate hearing mismo nung tinanong ako anong feeling anong naramdam ako and I said hopelessness because really I think most people who commit suicide um, who, or, uh, who are in, this, in that path yung feeling nila is yung isolation sa kayong hopelessness na wala nang wala nang redeeming factor wala na hindi ka na hindi ka na makakalas dito which is not true really always not true ikaw naman doc yun ang nararamdaman ni Heidi but when you were <coughs> when you went through that dark phase yeah, yeah. of Actually, the relationship hindi nakalimutan ko na talaga sa feeling ko i was just so worried about were you crying every day Um, in the beginning, because there's so much, because I saw the videos, right? So, then December 8, we got together from the kill fight. And then December 9, then he tried to kill himself that night. Because the friends told me all about what was going on. I had suspected about one girl because people were telling me. Mm-hmm. When I confront him, he obviously, of course, it's not true. And, you know, I guess you don't want to believe or something, but I, I really have a hard time believing people lie to me. So I believed him. But when I saw the videos, it was all there already. So um, while we were here, his friend, one of his best friends had dinner with him. And the friend said, by the way, we went to Vicky. We told her everything that's been going on. She's, of course, breaking up with you. And then we got all your hard drives, your, all your like that. So that same evening already, he decided to kill himself. Oh. Ayaw mong makita eh. Parang nakatakot mong makita. Ayaw mong makita mong mangyayari. Kung ano yung susunod na mangyayari. Yeah, yeah. Siyempre, during that time, you felt not just the pain, but the betrayal. The betrayal. The uh, but I also know him well enough. Yun lang. Na his life is not that valuable to him. And he really didn't... Parang when he talks, it's okay lang to be dead. It's okay so, to be dead. What people don't know is that he really... He, parang for three days, he didn't wake up. So I was, so I, who else was going to take care of him? But I was the one, right? 
So we decided, this neurologist decided to do an EEG, which is a brainwave measurement energy, and it was very Three low. days. I was in a coma. Yeah, he, yeah. I didn't know. So they said, you know, if he wakes up, he might be a vegetable. I really prayed so hard. I went to the ninth floor in the chapel. I prayed. I said, and then I'm, I really, Mama Mary, if you just make him normal, I won't leave him. But since I promised not to leave him, and I promised to make sure he'd be okay, so I didn't leave. So everybody's like looking at me like, why are you not So he was the the next day? Then he woke up and third he was fine. Day. He didn't have the third day. He was the third day. He was the third day. So you were there when he was there? Yeah, I was there. Yeah. So during this whole time that the, the issue was all out in the news and it was a national issue, hindi nila alam tong chapter na to na nangyayari between uh, the actually, two of you. Actually, hindi ko din alam. Ako naman ang big question ko, Doc. Ito ang gusto kong malaman from you. Why did you forgive him? Because I can see, I was very sure that he was very kind. There was no problem with me. But I also know that he was molested. Um by a gay guy when he was like eight years old. And that part of him, which he would talk to me about, but I really molded everything that went after that. And then, unlike other people, who would probably tell their parents he didn't. So he had nowhere to process it. So, and then yeah, he's good, he's good, but in his mind, I know he felt so dirty. But I know this guy's capable of so much. He's such a good person. Karen, he got the wrong breaks when he was young and he couldn't control it. But in the end, I had a boyfriend because before Hayden that died of lung cancer. And for me, that was so painful because it's so finite. But I'll never see him again. No matter what I do, I'll never see him again. In the back of my mind, I love him. I know we won't end up together. But at some point in time, in the future, I'd like to see him. Mm. Kahit ganun lang, kahit lang from afar, pero mm. hindi naman napatay siya. Mm. So, when, he, and I know he's so capable of committing suicide. So, but I just wanted to make sure, I knew God would help him to get together. But until that time, parang nag-aalalay lang ako. I know naman I couldn't. I tried my best, you know. People who think they can change people by doing yeah. things, you have to realize it's not, you can't, you can't do anything. But nothing worked until God came into his life. And then I let go and he totally changed. So, mm. so don't ever think you can change anybody. Upa, kubaya, tahubaya, just leave it up to the Lord. Surrender. And just keep praying, surrender. The point of surrender na yun was the point na God sent my my mentor Ravi, who passed away last uh, last year, um, and shared with me what how important it is to live your life according to uh, according to truth, and that this the truth is not an idea, truth is a person. So that's when I discovered Christ and I really got to know my my Lord, and. Um, without intending to really change, I just noticed that my some of my friends were already commenting na parang, oh, parang iba na yung, iba yung, yung disposition mo, parang you're, you're, parang you're at peace, you're mellow, ganyan, ganyan. But ako parang, I, my focus wasn't on myself anymore. Uh, I was just really wanting to find out, what is it ba? What is he saying about me? Mm -hmm. Because that is the truest thing anyone can ever tell you. And what did he say about you? That I am precious, that I am important, that I am made in the image of God, and that I have a purpose. So, I think when you experience that kind of love, that really transforms you. When I met Christ, I learned, I realized that love is not an idea. Love is actually a person. In fact, um, if I may quote a Bible verse, it says that um, this is how you know that what love is. Jesus Christ died for his sins. Well, so, we which serious. means the implication is you can't know what love is without understanding who Christ is. When you experience true love, Tony, it really changes who you are. It really changes the way you think. It changes your values. It changes the, the things you pursue. It changes your behavior and the things that you do. So, because of that, thank you. Because hindi lang naman yung love. I mean, yes, it's God's love, but it was God's love that must, must manifested. I experienced God's love through through my wife, Vicky. Yeah. And so, 
ma- malalim para <laughs> sa akin. Ikaw talaga ang God's gift sa kanila. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Kumbaga, eh, you were the instrument. Ako na ang na ba? Yeah. But it's true. Yeah, kasi you really appreciate you, me. Of course, I appreciate you. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's why I treasure and cherish our marriage so much. Kasi it doesn't, it's not just a ceremony that we did in... in Nawala no, si Tony. in Paris. <laughs> yeah. You didn't attend. Kaya nga. Um, <laughs> Pero grabe yung wedding na yun. Okay. Lavish and grand it was. Hindi yun yung pinakimportante sa, sa akin. Sa akin, the whole, the whole idea that we, that I married the person that God sent me. Um, the person who ch- changed me and who continuously changes me uh, by, by, the, by, by her love. That to me is the very, very gift. And that's why we have a small family now with Scarlett. I really, really <laughs> treasure and cherish that. So if you think about it, that's also the reason why we gave Scarlett Snow the name Scarlett Snow. Because that verse, that's actually a verse. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 118, though your sins be red, as red as Scarlett, I shall make it white as snow. So whenever I look at Scarlett, I will always remember that my life before my sin before us was as red as scarlet mm-hmm. because of God's love, God's transforming love. It's now as white as snow. Can you imagine now? He's the one who guides me. He's the one who, who leads me down the path. And he's really the father and the head of the family, which is amazing since, you know, I'm such an alpha woman. But I really respect his wisdom, his kindness, and he lives the talk. It's not, it's not just, you know, monologue for... I see him struggle. I see him. He's more well, uh, a thousand percent, you know, better. And, and that's, I guess, the hope here that who would, you know, sometimes people don't believe, but it's too good to be true. But I promise you, it's really true. And we are living. It's not a perfect life, of course, but the kindness and love that he shows me. So after everything that you have been through in the relationship and in the marriage, what would you say? is your greatest lesson about love. The only way you can truly love a person is if you know everything about that person. Everything, all the darkest secrets, everything that that person doesn't even want to share with anyone because it's just too embarrassing or too dark. But once you've known that person that well and still accept that person and still love that person, that is love. I think with God, all things are possible. I'm sure you all are so shocked that we are here and we are so happy and we are so blessed. And, uh, you know, I think you just really have to have God in your life and everything. If you put God first, all will be added on to you. All good things will be added on to you.